Thanks so much for inviting me to speak today. Um, so I'm a data scientist at the charity Nesta. Uh, so in my work I analyse big data to help uh, better understand the UK's creative economy. Uh, and then I create uh, data visualisations, uh, like that one there, uh, to tell others about what we find. So last year, I was lucky enough to be given access to a new data set by the British Film Institute. The data set contained almost every UK film released over the last 100 years, along with complete cast and crew lists. I used that data to examine how the gender mix in UK films had changed over time. So today I thought I'd show you five quick results from that research. There's lots more detail on our website uh, if you're interested. So starting with casts, this chart shows the gender mix of casts and how it's changed over time. The yellow bars are the percentage of cast members who are women across all films in a single year. The chart shows that since the end of World War II, there has been no real improvement in the on-screen gender mix. The percentage of women has fluctuated between 25 and 35 per cent and is currently sits around 30 per cent. That lack of change is in stark contrast to the trend that we've seen in the wider UK workforce, workforce where the gender mix uh, has steadily risen from just over 30% in the 1950s to just under 50% last year. But for some reason, that trend hasn't been reflected in film. And in fact, the peak for female representation in UK film was 101 years ago in 1917, when women made up 41% of film casts. Turning to crews, women currently make up around 34% of all crew members. But what I found is that there are large differences in the gender mix of the departments within film crews. In most departments, women have never held more than 25% of senior roles. And in music, photography and sound, women still make up less than 10% of senior roles. In a couple of departments like production and direction, there were substantial improvements in the gender mix over the 1980s. But for some reason, those gains uh, uh, stalled in the 1990s, and we've seen little improvement since. Turning back to casts, most actors in any given film will be playing unnamed characters. So their characters won't have names, but they'll be described by their occupation instead. I found that unnamed characters who work in highly skilled occupations, like doctors, lawyers, managers, are much more likely to be played by men than women. So for example, since 1985, only 16% of doctors have been played by women. But to put that in context, women currently make up 52% of registered doctors <coughs> in the UK. Now, of course, many films do depict historic events. Uh, and even for films set in the present day, the gender imbalances that we see on screen may be reflecting imbalances that still exist in the workforce. But the results still show how, these, uh, how films have portrayed these highly skilled occupations over time. These portrayals can mould our expectations of these occupations and perhaps shape even our aspirations. Now, in the data set itself, each cast and crew member has a unique ID, and that lets us track people over time. I found that female actors have tended to appear in fewer films and have had shorter careers than male actors. One big good bit of news, however, is that this gap appears to be narrowing over time. So for older generations, men were completing more films than women, even in the early stages of their careers. But for younger generations, that same gap is much smaller. That said, we can't be certain that the gap is closing, because younger generations are only partway through their careers. So the gender gap could still widen if men tend to get more films towards the end of their careers. Finally, I looked at how the gender of senior crew members relates to the gender mix of the actors in their films. I found that films that had at least one woman in a senior writing or directing role also had substantially more women in their casts. At its widest, the gender gap is 13 percentage points. That means that in films that had all fema female writing and directing teams, the percentage of cast members who were women was 13 percentage points higher than in films that had all male writing and directing teams. So of course this result could stem from lots of different factors and we have to be careful not to draw a causal link. But it's still an interesting result and one that we thought merits further investigation. So that was just a quick overview of my research findings. I think compared to surveys, big data sets like this can provide us with a more comprehensive picture and a much more longer term view of gender imbalances. 
And over the last couple of years, there's been a number of other studies that have used big data sets like this one to examine gender imbalances in the creative industries. I've just listed a couple here on the slide. One study analyzed gender direction in film scripts. Another used facial recognition technology to measure the amount of time that actors spend on screen. The third examined abuse of comments left below news articles. And the final study is one that I did in which I scraped the past programs of the BBC Proms to examine the gender mix among composers. The key takeaway from this type of research is that we should aim to develop a range of different diversity metrics for each art form. That's for two reasons. First, it's because there's no one perfect data set or perfect method. So for example, in my own study on film, I'm inferring people's gender based on their first name, but of course not everyone's gender can be inferred in this way. So in the study itself, I put error bounds around all my estimates, but more broadly, it shows that every result is just an estimate. Another reason to develop multiple metrics is that there are many different ways to define gender balance. A really basic definition might be 50% women in cast and crew, but that definition won't necessarily tell us the power and influence that women held in the film industry, and it doesn't tell us how women are portrayed in these films. That's why we should continually develop new metrics that look at different aspects of gender balance. The limitations of data-driven research also serve to highlight how important qualitative analysis is. In particular, it can help us to explain how and why these imbalances emerge. Just to end with, if you are an arts organisation and you're interested in helping researchers to measure gender imbalances in your art form, then these are just a couple of ideas about how to start. One way to start might be to conduct a stock take of your non-confidential data. Now, when we talk about data, people tend to think of just spreadsheets filled with numbers. But I would encourage you to think much more broadly and consider all the information that you have released into the public domain over your organisation's lifetime. The reason for doing that is because the types of formats that we can now analyse has really expanded over the last 10 years. We can scrape websites, we can use optimal character recognition to read text and PDF documents, and we can use facial recognition technology to identify the gender of people in photos and videos. So following a stock take, then the next step might be to encourage others to explore your data. And there are lots of ways of doing this. It doesn't mean you need to digitise everything. Perhaps as a first step, you could just release a description of what you have and try and gauge interest. Or you could invite in pro proposals to analyse your data and then give access to selected researchers. Or you could run a workshop or hackathon for data scientists where your data is just used on site. There's no one right approach and there are lots of different ways to help. So just to wrap up, I think there's real potential for big data to help us better understand the gender imbalances in the creative industries. Great new data sets are emerging and at the same time we're seeing advances in machine learning that are expanding the types of material that we can analyse. I really do hope that we can make the most of these to ultimately improve the diversity of our creative industries. Thanks very much. <laughs>